Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, massive open online course titled Bilingualism, a Cognitive and Psycholinguistic Perspective. I am your instructor for this course. I am uh, Bidisha Shom from the Humanities uh, and Social Sciences Department of IIT Guwahati. Now, this course is on bilingualism as the title suggests. Um, bilingualism is a phenomena that spans across various domains. Um, we all know who a bilingual is, there are bilingual societies all over the world and so on. So, uh, which aspect of bilingualism are we going to uh, focus on is uh, what we will discuss now. So, first and foremost, why study bilingualism? Why, why bilingualism? The answer can be varied. One of the most common answers given uh, is that it is a rather widespread phenomenon. You find bilinguals all over the world. There is a huge number of bilingual population which is growing every day given various uh, factors like globalization, urbanization, development, mass migration and so on. So, this is uh, one of the most prominent reasons because it is a phenomena that is uh, quite prominent, it is, it is everywhere. So, it merits studies, it, it merits uh, some investigation that is one of the arguments that is uh, given. But to me, a more convincing argument is that bilingualism is interesting, it is worth investigating because language is interesting. Languaging is interesting because when we speak even one language, it is not a simplistic phenomena. Speaking a language, understanding language or let us put it like this, languaging is a very complex set of networks of interconnected sets of behaviors, interconnected sets of skills and processes. Those skills occur, those skills uh, function at various levels uh, starting with the articulatory system, then you need to take into account the cognitive mechanism behind those articulatory mechanisms. Simultaneously, there are neuronal networks devoted to these tasks and last but not the least, you need to take care of the social, socio-cultural setting of language use. Now, all of these are connected to each other and this uh, is actually even though it is not evident when we uh, use language or understand language, it is quite a bit of a task. So, speaking to be the ability to be able to speak even a simple sentence takes care takes into account all of these various factors. So, what do you say depends on how do you see that particular event or particular idea or a person and so on and depending on the socially accepted uh, norms you have to put your thoughts into words in an appropriate form and for that your brain has to cooperate. So, it is a very it is a very complex process. So, we uh, can call it uh, quite a bit of a mental gymnastics. So, this happens when you speak a single language. Now, a bilingual does all of that with double the effort. So, it is all of it multiplied by 2 that is that itself makes it a even more complex phenomena and that is exactly why we are interested in studying bilinguals. Now, when whether it is a monolingual or it is a bilingual or a multilingual, the speakers themselves do not really realize the finer nuances, this kind of complex network of processes that go through uh, in their mind while, while they are simply speaking. But it is our job to unearth those processes in a course like this. So, when we say bilingualism as we have already seen, there are so many different domains that come together. So, bilingualism has been studied uh, within various sub-disciplines of linguistics, be it generative linguistics, cognitive linguistics, psycholinguistics, applied linguistics, various subdomains, and there are domains beyond linguistics also like psychology, cognitive science and neuroscience. So, all of these dif different disciplines have come together to understand and unearth the various complex mechanisms that underlie a bilingual mind. So, but we will not be able to uh, look into all of these, we will focus primarily on the cognitive and psycholinguistic aspects. So, what do we mean by cognitive and psycholinguistic aspects of bilingualism? This is a gamut of processes, a whole range of processes that lie behind the bilingual speaker's performance. A bilingual speaker's performance in terms of both understanding that is comprehension as well as production of the two languages. 
So, the processes that are an integral part of a bilingual mind and it is working. How does the bilingual mind work? What are the mental processes? When we talk about psycholinguistic processes, psycholinguistic aspect of bilingualism, we are primarily interested in the mental process that are behind the linguistic outcome. So, this is exactly where we will be focusing on. So, mental processes what happens in the bilingual mind when we speak or when we understand. So, to break it down further, we will look at all these different aspects that we have mentioned here. So, how does a bilingual mind acquire, represent, comprehend, produce and control two different languages? So, these five different processes are what we will be calling cognitive and psycholinguistic processes. So, the aspects that cover the all the mental uh, processing part of language uh, speaking two languages. So, these are the five primarily five different domains within bilingual language use that we will be looking at in this course. While we are at it, we will also look at what is the level of interaction between the two languages of the bilingual. So, when we as I started saying that even speaking a single language has to do with all of these processes. It is not only when you speak two languages that this happens. So, this happens with your first language, this happens with your second language. Now, what are the levels of interaction at each of these levels between those two languages is another angle to understanding the bilingual mind and its processes. So, that is another question that we will be looking at and what are the consequences? After we have done all of this, what a bilingual goes through, through his life from childhood to adulthood, if he has been a bilingual all his life, does it have any impact? Is in other words, is a bilingual a different animal than a monolingual? That is the basic question. So, is there a consequence? Do we have a cost or do we have some advantages? So, basically consequences. So, three levels of investigation we will be looking at. One is the process level, then the interaction level between two languages and then of course, the consequences. So, these are the areas that we will be looking at primarily in this course. So, to look at these various uh, aspects, we have divided the 20 lecture course into 8 modules. Uh, these are the 8 modules that we will be discussing. So, the first module will situate the course in terms of how we become bilingual, how individual bilingualism and social bilingualism come into place, what are the different factors. So, in essence the introduction, the first module that is will set the tone for the rest of the course. Now, before we understand how a bilingual mind works, we need to know how a bilingual uh, happens in the first place. How does a society become bilingual? So, all those uh, nuances of the background processes, psychological processes in the society, in the human mind and so on will be discussed in the first module and this will introduce the topic. And from there, we will go on the uh, to, to the next module. So, acquisition, bilingual cognition, bilingual brain, uh, bilingual speech processing, bilingual language processing and then cognitive consequences and last but not the least applied areas. So, as you can see that um, acquisition, we will st uh, start with acquisition, how language are learnt, languages are learnt, moving on to the neuroscience uh, aspect of bilingualism that is the brain and gradually we will go on to processing. So, when we say processing, we mean comprehension and production. So, we have uh, div divided the processing into two segments, phonological processing versus language processing. So, speech versus language processing in two ways because this is rather vast area. So, we have divided into two categories and then of course, cognitive consequences of bilingualism. That will be also discussed in detail and then we will look at the applied areas. After we have understood uh, to some extent the finer um, aspects of bilingualism uh, in terms of a human mind, then we will try and see if this knowledge has any impact. Can we use this? Does it have any real life impact? How can this knowledge be used? How can uh, we benefit from these understandings and so on? So, that will be the last module. So, this is basically the structure of the course. Uh, in terms of difficulty level, this is moderate level course. This is not exactly an introductory course uh, in this domain. 
However, that said uh, each module starts with an adequate amount of introduction. So, before we get into the experimental studies, before we get into the uh, data driven uh, evidence and so on, we will be uh, um, establishing the domain, establishing that particular area with adequate references and everything. So, it, it will be, uh, it will help in understanding that particular module. So, this is the method we will use, uh, use in all the modules. And materials, of course, there are slides for each co each of the modules and each, each of the modules will also have an exhaustive list of references for your benefit. Evaluation structure will be, there will be a weekly evaluation and also at the end of the course there will be a final examination. So, there will be um, continuous assessment as well as a final assessment. So, this is how the course will uh, move on. So, with this I welcome you all to the exciting domain of the bilingual mind. Thank you. Mm -hmm.